Let us know about the reproduction system. The reproductive system of the human body can be either male or female. The male reproductive system synthesizes gametes called spermatozoa that are responsible for fertilizing the female gametes or oocytes during reproduction. The female reproductive system is designed to undergo conception, gestation and birth once a spermatozoan fertilizes an oocyte. The male reproductive system is composed of the epididymis, vas deferens, urethra, penis, testis, scrotum and prostate. The female reproductive system consists of the ovaries, uterus, fallopian tubes, vagina, vulva and mammary glands. Epididymis The epididymis is a long coiled tube that rests on the backside of each testicle. It transports and stores sperm cells that are produced in the testis. Vas deferens It is a firm tube that travels from the epididymis into the pelvic cavity to just behind the bladder. The vas deferens transports matured sperm to the urethra, the tube that carries urine or sperm to outside of the body in preparation for ejaculation. Urethra The urethra is the tube that carries urine from the bladder to outside of the body. In males, it has the additional functioning of ejaculating semen when the man reaches orgasm. When the penis is erect during sex, the flow of urine is blocked from the urethra allowing only semen to be ejaculated at orgasm. Penis This is the male organ used in sexual intercourse. It consists of the root, the visible part of the shaft and the gland penis. The opening of the urethra is located at the tip of the gland's penis. The base of the gland's penis is called the corona. Scrotum It is the thick skinned sac that surrounds and protects the testes. The scrotum also acts as a climate control system for the testes because they need to be slightly cooler than body temperature for normal sperm development. Testes The testes are the primary male reproductive organ and are responsible for testosterone and sperm production. These are oval organs about the size of large olives that lie in the scrotum. Seminal vesicle It is located above the prostate join with the vast difference to form the ejaculatory ducts which travel through the prostate. The prostate and the seminal vesicles produce fluid that nourishes the sperm. Prostate It lies just under the bladder and surrounds the urethra. Walnut sized in young men, the prostate enlarges with age. When the prostate enlarges too much, it can block urine flow through the urethra and cause bothersome urinary symptoms. Male Reproductive System The male reproductive system consists of following parts. A pair of testes Vasa afferentia A pair of epididymis A pair of vasa differentia A pair of seminal vesicles Ejaculatory duct Prostate gland a pair of Cowper's gland. Urethra. Now let us study about each part. Testes. In case of human males, two testes are located in a pocket-like structure called scrotum. In each testis, highly coiled seminiferous tubules are present. These tubules are small, highly coiled, having the length of 80 centimeters. The sperms are produced in these tubules by meiosis in very large numbers, hundreds of millions. Male sex hormones, testosterone is also produced in testes. The function of scrotum is it helps in maintaining low temperature of the testes, 2 to 25 degrees Celsius, which is lower than the body temperature necessary for sperm formation. Vasa efferentia. The seminiferous tubules open into vasa afferentia. 
The function of vasa afferentia is to collect the spermatozoa from the tubules. It forms epididymis. Epididymis. The function of epididymis is it helps in the storage of sperm cells temporarily and transports the sperm cells into vasa afferentia, then to urethra of penis and finally expels out of the body. Vasa deferentia. From each epididymis arises vas deferens, which ascends into the abdominal cavity, looping around the ureter. Seminal vesicles. They open into the vas deferens. They produce seminal fluid. It is the source of energy for these sperms when they are outside the body. Ejaculatory duct. A duct from seminal vesicles join the vas deferens and forms as ejaculatory duct. Two ejaculatory duct join at the center urethra. Urethra in male. Urethra not only transports urine but also sperms. It is also called as urinogenital duct. The flowchart on the screen gives information about the passage of spermatozoa. Now let us learn about the sperm. Each sperm has a head, middle piece and a tail. Head. Head consists of a acrosome and male nucleus. Acrosome helps the sperm in pertaining into ovum. Male nucleus fuses with the female nucleus. Middle piece. Head and middle piece are attached by neck. The middle piece has a mitochondria which gives energy to the sperm. Tail. The purpose of the tail is it helps the sperm to move. The fluid secreted from seminal vesicles, prostate gland and cowper's gland together collectively called as seminal plasma. The seminal plasma along with sperm is called as semen. Sending out of semen from male's body is called as ejaculation. Based on normal fertility, 60% of sperms should have normal size and shape while the remaining 40% of them should have vigorous motility. From the age of about 13 or 14 years, men start producing sperms and can go on doing so most of their lives. However, their power to do so decreases as they grow older. Female Reproductive System The important parts of a female reproductive system are a pair of ovaries, a pair of fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina, ovaries. In human females, the two ovaries where ova are formed are located in deep abdomen of body. Image on the screen shows the female reproductive system. The ova develops into tiny cellular structures called follicles. At first, these follicles look like cellular bubbles in the ovary which are called as graphene follicles. As follicle grows on, it develops a cavity filled with a fluid. Each follicle contains a single ovum that is formed after the process of cell division, meiosis. When an ovum becomes mature, then the follicle ruptures at the surface of the ovary and tiny particles of ovum releases out. This release of egg or ovum is called ovulation. Fallopian tubes Usually the ovum enters the widened funnel of an oviduct called fallopian tube, a tube that extends from the neighborhood of the ovary to the muscular, thick-walled uterus. The fertilization takes place as the ovum passes through the oviduct, thus begins a new life. The second phase of meiosis of ovum is carried out after the entry of the sperm before fusing of both the nuclei. After the fusion of both nuclei, the ovum develops into zygote. The zygote undergoes mitotic division while traveling down in the fallopian tubes. By the time it reaches the uterus, it gets converted into a solid ball of cells. Uterus Uterus is in the shape of inverted pear. The inner layer of uterus is called as endometrium. The thickness of these layers increases gradually after menstruation. If the fertilization does not take place, then the endometrium disintegrates and flows out as menstrual fluid. If the fertilization takes place, then 
the thickness of endometrium increases and ready to receive the embryo. The important functions of endometrium is it provides nourishment and disposes wastes of the developing embryo. As the ovum moves down the oviduct, it undergoes many changes and finally attaches to the soft tissues of the uterus. Once it gets attached to the embryo, sinks into the soft inner uterine wall. Then certain cells of the embryo develops into membranous structures that help to nourish, protect and support the developing embryo. The cells include chorion, amnion, allantois, yolk sac. Now, let us learn about these cells one by one. Chorion During the development of embryo, tiny finger-like projections grow from the surface of the outer membrane called chorion into soft tissues of uterus. The tissues of chorion and the adjacent part of the uterine tissue make into placenta. Placenta is a tissue that is formed by the cells of the embryo and the mother. It will form around 12 weeks of pregnancy and becomes an important structure for the nourishment of embryo. Under normal conditions, the blood do not flow from mother to the young. The blood systems of the two are separated by thin membranes made up of cells that allow an exchange mainly by diffusion of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients and waste materials. Amnion Another embryonic membrane called the amnion grows around the embryo. The cavity within the amnion is filled with a fluid called amniotic fluid. The embryo starts developing in this fluid-filled cavity which keeps it moist and protects it from minor mechanical injury. Allantois It originates from the digestive canal of the embryo. It forms a major part of tube-like structure called umbilical cord. Umbilical cord contains very important blood vessels that connect the embryo with the placenta. Yolk sac it encloses a fluid-filled cavity. It has no specific function in placental mammals. The embryo develops until it is ready to born. From the third month of pregnancy, the embryo is called fetus. On an average, pregnancy lasts for 9 months or 280 days. This period is called gestation period. Now let us observe the chart showing month-wise developmental stages of human embryo. Childbirth As the evolution of pregnancy goes on, the fetus of an embryo with certain characters grows and the diameter of the uterus increases. Generally, around ninth month of pregnancy, the head of the fetus turned down towards the opening of the uterus. During birth, the head of the baby comes out first. But in rare cases, the feet may also come out. This makes the delivery more difficult. Childbirth begins when the muscle layers of the uterus starts a rhythmic contract and relax. These actions are felt as labor pain. At first, the muscular cavity of the uterus is just strong enough to move the baby slowly towards the vagina, outer canal of the female reproductive tract. Generally, during this stage, the amnion sac around the baby breaks and its fluid contents are released. Due to this, the contractions of the muscles become stronger and more frequent and the baby is pushed through the vagina and finally into the outer world. The umbilical cord leading from the baby to the placenta is tied off and is cut by the doctor. Even after the birth of the baby, the muscular contractions of the uterus continue until they push out the tissues of placenta, which are commonly termed as afterbirth. During the last stage of pregnancy, a watery lymph-like fluid called colostrum gets accumulated in the mammary glands. This colostrum gradually enlarges and undergoes transformation. For the first few days after the baby has born, the mammary gland secretes only colostrum. It is very important to feed 
this to a newborn baby because it helps in developing the immune system of the child.